Okay, so the quantum mechanical model explains a lot of things that we have observed. So we see that the chemical properties of the elements are periodic because the number of valence electrons is periodic. In the same column in the periodic table, we have elements with similar properties and they have the same number of valence electrons. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what that slide says. So let's look at some examples of this, the noble gases in group eight. Um, these elements have eight valence electrons except for helium. Helium only has two valence electrons, but that is full for that first level. So the noble gases are especially non-reactive. Helium and neon really don't make compounds. Um, and that's because these, these atoms are especially stable. They don't need to interact with other atoms to make a lower energy molecule or ion. When you've got a quantum level that's full, like these guys have, the overall energy of the electrons is lower. So noble gases are uh, non-reactive because their electron configurations are extra stable. If we look at group 1a, these are elements that have one more electron than a noble gas. These are very reactive elements because that one electron makes them less stable. So if if sodium were to lose one electron, then it would have the same electron configuration as neon, the previous noble gas, which is especially stable. It does not become neon because it still has 11 protons, but its electrons then are like neon. So all of these elements tend to form positive one ions because by losing an electron, Giving, handing it off to somebody else, now they can have the same electron configuration as the noble gases. I think of the noble gases as like the cool kids in high school, that in group, right? And a lot of the other kids are trying to be in that group, and if you can't be in the group, you want to at least look like you're in the group, right? Fads change, but every year there's something that all the high school kids have to have. When my oldest was in high school, it was Hollister hoodies. You had to wear your Hollister hoodie to school, and they're like, we're all showing our originality by dressing alike, right? So these guys are like, you know, somebody who, your mom made you wear a hat to school, right? And so to get out of the house, you had to put the hat on, but as soon as you got to school, the hat comes off because the cool kids aren't wearing a hat, right? So by losing an electron, they can look like a noble gas because the electrons are on the outside of an atom, right? So they're kind of like the clothing. The electrons can change. We can gain electrons, we can lose electrons. The nucleus is like your soul, your personality, who you are. That can't change. So sodium cannot become neon, but it can look like neon. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes. That's why all of the alkali metals will have a one plus charge when they become ions. Because when they lose that one electron, now they have a noble gas electron configuration, which is extra stable. Yep, exactly. The halogens are the group that's one before the noble gases. So these are elements who have one less electron than a noble gas. So these are gonna react in a way where they can gain an electron so that they can have the same electron configuration as a noble gas. Does that make sense? So these all form negative one ions because they gain an electron. So we see that the quantum mechanical model is explaining these patterns in ion charges by how the electrons are arranged. So we, we um, learned how to predict some of the charges of the main group ions and it's predictable from the periodic table because of the quantum mechanical model. So we see for group one elements they tend to form plus one ions.
because losing one electron gives them a noble gas electron configuration. The group two elements, the alkaline earth metals, things like magnesium, they tend to form positive two ions because by losing two electrons, they have a noble gas electron configuration. Group seven, the halogens will gain one electron because that's the easiest way for them to look like a noble gas. And if we go, go to group six, group six like oxygen will gain two electrons that's why counting backwards from the noble gas will help us to predict the negative charge, because that's how many squares, how many electrons need to be gained. So this is um, a periodic table illustration from your textbook. Um, it had the uh, periods numbered incorrectly because they didn't do helium and hydrogen on this one, and then they forgot that, so I fixed it. So we see that the group one elements are all forming plus one ions. Group two are forming plus two. Over here, group seven are forming negative one ions because for fluorine, if it gains one electron, it becomes like the noble gas, and that's true for all of these. Oxygen and sulfur, selenium, tellurium, they need to gain two electrons. Nitrogen needs to gain three electrons. I don't know why they didn't put phosphorus in here. Phosphorus also will gain three electrons. Here's aluminum. So aluminum's electron configuration is 3s2, 3p1. So if it loses all three of its valence electrons, it too can have a noble gas configuration that's the same as neon. Any questions? So we learned this in chapter three by, here's the pattern, I I'm just telling you this, believe me. Now we can understand why when we understand how the electrons are put together. So what about the electron configurations for ions? So for anions, let me make sure I didn't, so I didn't skip anything. For anions, um, the nonmetal is going to gain enough electrons so that it can have a noble gas electron configuration, which would have eight valence electrons. So that gives us the S and the P orbitals are going to be full. So if we look at sulfur, so here's the electron configuration for a sulfur atom. It only has six valence electrons. In order to have eight, it has to gain two electrons. Those two electrons are going to go into this unfilled 3p sublevel. And now we're going to have 3s2, 3p6, and we have eight valence electrons. This has not become argon, but the electrons are the same as argon. The nucleus, though, is still the nucleus of a sulfur atom. And so this has a negative two charge. Any questions? For cations, um, the predictable ones are those that lose all their valence electrons. So why, why would that be a good thing? Well, the, the valence electrons for these atoms, you've just got like one or two or three, and so that shell, that outer, layer is not even close to full, the easiest way to get to a full level is to just peel off that partial layer. And underneath is a full, full layer. Losing electrons here is always an endothermic process. It does require an input of energy, but it happens fairly easily. So if we look at magnesium, Here's magnesium's electron configuration. It has two valence electrons. If it gets rid of these two, it's going to have the same electron configuration as neon. Now, those electrons are not going to fall off without any energy, right? You have to expend energy, put energy into magnesium to pull its electrons off. But it'll let you do that. So you can pull those two electrons off. This is the new electron configuration. And now it has a charge because the nucleus does not change. Any questions?